Mr Evans, pleasure to serve under your chairmanship today and also thank my honourable friend, the uh, member for Glasgow South West, for securing this debate today. The situation in Inverclyde is that we currently have two job centres, one in Greenock and one in Port Glasgow. Following the UK Government's consultation, it was determined that the Port Glasgow job centre would close, while the Greenock office would be moved to a yet undetermined location. I believe this decision is short-sighted and I sympathise with the views of staff at the Port Glasgow job centre who have expressed their understandable concerns regarding the impacts of this change on their clients. The Minister should know that Inverclyde has some of the worst levels of social deprivation in the UK. 26% of children in Inverclyde grew up in poverty. One in ten live in severe poverty. Youth unemployment has over double the UK rate. The number of people in JSA are required to find work on universal credit has also doubled the rate of the UK as a whole. You would think that such a, a set of circumstances would prompt the government to grant additional support to the area. Instead, the UK government's response has been to cut benefits and to half the number of job centres in my constituency. A report issued by the Scottish government found that Inverclyde will experience one of the most significant falls in welfare spending of any Scottish local authority relative to our working age population size. By 2021, this will amount to an overall cut of £15 million, the equivalent of £298 per working age adult. Given the challenges that Inverclyde is facing, I think it's appropriate for the Minister to visit my constituency. That's why I wrote to him on the 14th of June and extended an invitation to not only meet with me, but also with the job centre management to discuss the impact of the proposed closure in my constituents. And yes, I'm still waiting for a reply. A ministerial visit would also be an opportunity for the UK government to provide such needed, much needed assurances regarding the long term future of the Greenock office and the vital service that it offers. I'm seeing the minister looking quizzically at me as he's questioning what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, is the proposed closure of the Port Glasgow Job Centre about providing a better service for users? No, of course it isn't. In the words of the PCS Union, the UK government is abandoning the unemployed. At a time when many people in lower incomes are facing uncertain futures with respect to their employment. Minister, Certainly I will. Thank you for giving way. On uncertain futures, does a member agree that job closures like job centre closures like mine in Dalkeith will affect women affected by the 2011 Pensions Act, WASPy women, and dealing them a double blow, which is unacceptable. And I wonder if he will join me in wondering where these women will go to find the apprenticeships that members on the government benches suggest that they find. Yeah, you're absolutely, is absolutely correct. It's, it's the, the classic double whammy when people are put into an impossible situation by the government then look to support from the government and find that that support has been taken away from them again. Yeah, uh, the, the apprenticeship scheme, as we all know, was just a, an aberration uh, at, at that moment. Uh, uh, unfortunately, all levels of poverty are rising. In-work poverty is on the rise. Yet the Minister continues to argue that the job centre mergers are needed to ensure that the welfare state works for those who need it and those who pay for it. This kind of irresponsible language detracts from the reality that those who need the service and those who pay for it are in fact the same people. Ultimately, the whole of society benefits if you reduce poverty and inequality. Job centres are supposed to be part of the solution. Aside from the £1 billion deal with the DUP, the UK government has otherwise made the case over the past seven years that drastic public spending cuts are a financial necessity. The plan to close job centres across the UK is part of a wider plan to sell £4.5 billion worth of government land and property by 2021. And yes, while it's easy to cut services and demonstrate savings made in the short term, it's not so easy to quantify and predict the long-term impact of those changes. Friend, Certainly. <clears throat> On, on the matter of property uh, and uh, quantifying decisions, does uh, my honourable friend agree with me that decisions like the one in my Livingston constituency to close an HMRC office in an area in West Lothian that is significantly cheaper and move it to Edinburgh City Centre in a record long-term uh, contract of, of 20 to 25 years is just sheer stupidity on the part of the government and is clearly going to be a waste of public money? I absolutely agree and I couldn't put it better myself. 
The UK government has simply not made a convincing case that the proposed closures will benefit clients or society as a whole. Job centre staff have contacted me to say that the impact of the closures on disabled people have not been properly assessed. The Scottish Government has indicated that the closures are likely to push many vulnerable people into crisis. Will the Minister meet with me in Inverclyde and show that the UK Government is actually listening to these concerns? We are about to set off into recess. I can assure the Minister I will clear my diary, I will cancel my holidays, I will be there whatever day he wishes to come and visit Inverclyde. Thank you. I'm going to call Mr Sweeney next. But, uh...